Hello guys, today we are going to create a vortex simulation. This sim contains 7 layers of simulation. Today we will create 3 layers, and in the next week, we will create other layers. We will also learn the lighting and rendering in the next video. Before moving to Houdini, make sure to like share, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I uploaded the hip file on Patreon, you can support me on Patreon. Let's dive into Houdini. Take a circle polygon node. Change the orientation to the ZX plane. Set the arc type to open so we can get only the line as an output. Increase the division size to 500. Take a polyframe node. Turn off the normal name and in the tangent name write N. Let deform the circle using attribute noise. We need to deform our position so instead of color write P. Set the range values to 0 centered. Reduce the amplitude to 0.1 because we need very less deformation. Turn on the animate noise and increase the pulse duration to 3 to get more speed. Reduce the roughness value to something between 0.38 to 0.39. Take transform node. In the Y axis of rotation write negative at frame. Add a null and rename it to curve 01 because we are going to use this null as a curve force in simulation. Take a scatter node and increase the force total count to 10,000. Add a point jitter and reduce the scale to 0 0.15. Take a time shift node and write $FF instead of $F. Also, turn off the integer frame, which I forgot to turn off. Now take a pyro source node. From the initialize mode select source smoke. And keep everything default. Take an attribute noise. We need to use the attribute noise 1.0 version. So to use that version we need to enable the assets bar. To enable that go to assets, assets manager, configuration. There you can see the asset definition toolbar menu. Change it to show always. Now change it to an older version. In the mode change it to multiplicative and signature to 1D. In the attribute select density and temperature. Turn on animated noise and remap noise. Set the minimum value to 0. Adjust the ramp something like this. Reduce the element size to 0.2. Now take a volume rasterize attribute node. 
In the attribute select density and temperature. Remove the density name from the coverage attribute. Reduce the voxel size to 0.05 and particle scale to 0.05. Take a PyroSOP solver node. First, let's adjust the sourcing for the simulation. Go to the Sourcing tab and increase the density source scale to 10. For the temperature reduce the acceleration strength to 25. Remove the flame source because we are not creating any kind of fire in this sim. Now go to the Advanced tab, open the Advection folder. In the field Advection menu change it to be FECC. Currently, the quality is too low. Let's increase the voxel scale. For testing purposes, I'm going to keep it to 0.05. Change the advection reflection to a single project. Go to the Shape tab and under the Buoyancy tab reduce the reference temperature to 400. For the final caching we are going to increase the global substeps to 5. Go to the field tab and under the temperature folder make the cooling rate value 0. Reduce the dissipation value to 0.05. Toggle on speed. This will calculate the speed field based on velocity. Currently, we are testing the sim so let's reduce the substeps back to 1. Now go to the shape tab. Turn on disturbance. In the mode method select continuously. Now turn on turbulence. In the noise type select analytic simplex noise. Increase the turbulence value to 0.35. Reduce the swirl size to 0.25. In the control field write speed. Copy the curve 01 null. Now dive inside the PyroSolver node. Take a gas curve force node and connect it to force underscore output. In the geometry source paste the null path. First, turn off the guide geometry. As you can see our smoke going in an opposite direction from the source direction. To fix this we need to negate the global force. Make the global force minus 1. Reduce the air resistance to 0.5. Set the value to 0 for the suction and orbit scale.
Now for the shaping, we need to adjust the ramp. Go to the shaping tab and delete the first point in the ramp. Now it's perfect. It's time to increase the substeps and reduce the voxel scale for better resolution. We need to compress the cache to save storage. Go to Output tab and turn on Convert VDB and use 16-bit float. Now remove the unwanted VDBs. We need only density and velocity. Now take a file cache node and let's cache it to disk. For the second layer, copy all the nodes. You can either select all the node and hold the ALT key and drag it. It will make a duplicate of all the nodes. Select the circle and increase the uniform scale to 1.5. Rest all keep it the same and cache it to disk. For the third layer, copy all the nodes and paste them here. After attribute noise add a copy and transform node. Make 20 numbers of copies. Keep the uniform scale value to 1.03. This will create 20 rings. Let's offset the rotation value and transform. Increase the total count to 20,000 in the scatter node.
In the point jitter, reduce the axis scale to 0.25 in the X and Y axis. Keep everything the same, and cache it to disk. Add a camera and adjust the view. Now add a retime node after the cache. In the input frame range, set it to 50. I accidentally put 50 in the output frame range also. I fixed it later. Reduce the speed by 60%. Now switch it to the volume tab. In the blend mode menu, select add vected. If you remove the velocity field while caching, the retime will not work properly. That's it for today, I will drop the final part of the tutorial on Sunday.